I was going to upload this one minute video of this white supremacist sexist bigoted woman but in editing it instead revealed to me an anthropological marvel completely changing how I view the world. Please give me a few minutes and join me in this fascinating rabbit hole, it will be worth it, trust me. Let's watch. It's 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm going to post this video on Twitter and if you get to see it you're lucky because I'm probably going to delete it really fast because it's really racist but I want to get the shit out of my chest because I can't take it no more. But I need white people to really start being white supremacists again. I need you guys to tap, tap into that shit and do it again, please, because this country is out of control. I mean, goddamn, we got little kids thinking that they could be fucking females. And we got black people thinking they built America. This shit is crazy. And honestly, if you guys don't do anything about it, your whole generation is going to be completely... Go, I mean, come on, now. Nah. You, you guys are getting killed off right now. And you guys, it seems like you guys are okay with it. Your women are, your women are getting raped, that's for sure, by Muslims and blacks. It's happening all the time. You see it. And nobody say anything because you can't say nothing bad about a Muslim or a black man. Oh, you can let them rape. Go ahead. Let them rape. But don't say anything about being racist. Don't say that. Right? You guys need to stop it. Okay? I don't know. I think Alex Jones was right about the whole uh, frog gay shit because white people used to be so strong. And you guys now are literally letting a whole word, a word racism. The word racism is killing your whole generation. It is. You're scared to be a racist. You better be a racist because if you're not, this is going to kill you off. Basically, racism means the death of white people. Did you notice anything? In editing, I realized it's not one, but two smoke detectors chirping, both with a 35 second periodicity, with the second one being the closest. How is it possible to live with two low battery smoke detectors? It turns out, she is not unique. The live radio call in program Loveline's two hosts Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla between 1995 to 2005 became fascinated with callers with a low battery background chirp and would interrogate the caller and time the periodicity of the smoke detector. The following is an edited down sample of what you can find in the playlist linked in the video description below. Brody. Hello. Turn your radio down. That's my TV, I'm sorry. What's happening? You're 15? Yes. <clears throat> Where are you calling from, Oakland? Mm-hmm. Will you turn your radio? <laughs> turn, please. Okay, Go. my question is, that is it okay if you're, like, tired of hearing about it, about... Oh, my things, God. Like, First call of the night. Smoke detector, huh? Bro, did you hear that little chirping sound? You can hear it? <laughs> We're just glad to know that you can hear it. TV is yeah. still on, too. Yeah. I hear it. <laughs> All right, bro Brody. You're tired of hearing about 9-11? Yes, and I just want to know, is it okay? Like, um, yeah, it, most people. There we go again. Yeah. How do you live with that thing chirping in the background? It's hard you to have a. Of, you sort of just learn to tune in. Oh, there's out. one in another room going off. Did you hear that? You can hear. <laughs> You've got two separate smoke detectors that are low on batteries. There's like one in each room. And they're all chirping. <laughs> yeah. Hold on a second. Oh my god. Sure, I know this is really. It's just not the night, but I can't help myself. That would bother a reptile. <laughs> Do you understand? Like, if you had an iguana, it would start freaking out eventually. Yes. Oh, my God. If you're a human being who has two smoke detectors that chirp every 35 seconds. We only heard two. She kind of alluded that maybe there are more. And you're living with it. With that chirping, I hear it through my skull. I feel that smoke detector in my testicles. <laughs> now, that's in your bedroom, right? Mm hmm And at, at night... It keeps going. You go to bed, right? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> oh my god adam think about that your neighbor has a leaky faucet you can't sleep brody huh yeah we understand we got a couple hours to kill night so how long has that thing been chirping since like last year probably year no it hasn't been a year i don't know it, i know <laughs> i know it's been a long time but i just don't know how long now how could she be surprised you... that we could hear that i cannot i couldn't <laughs> fathom somebody who would not be deeply deeply troubled by that thing going off in the room if you think brody was a unique outlier here's another caller with a similar issue you no. not been in love with a guy am i in love no you have you ever been no i think that may be the miss oh, uh -oh. <laughs> Do I, have to, I, don't, I shouldn't have to be i didn't think hold I on a second I mean... hold on hold on Marjorie. Okay. hold on 
Smoke detector battery went off in the background. I have it clocked in at about uh, 108, 109. Okay. So we should be looking for that thing to go off. Was every 35? They're about somewhere between 35 and 55 seconds. So around 43, she's got to be quiet again. Okay. She lives in L.A. Can't, can't. It sounds like her phone's right next to it, too. Here we go. I can't really hear you. Shh. Okay, just be quiet for a second. Okay. Hold on. There no? we go. Okay, that was at 47. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me, let me what, triangulate what, what, here. What room are you in? 47 off there. My bedroom? Your bedroom. Yeah. She okay. sleeps with this, Adam. I want you to think about that. Now, Marjorie. Yes. That, uh, when did it go off on the uh, last uh, one? By 35. The I went off on 35? All right, so uh, 411. Yeah. Should do it. Okay, you uh, live in a room that has a smoke detector that goes off every 36 seconds. Okay. Right? okay. Yeah. Are you in your bedroom right now? Yeah. Okay, just, just for a second, listen to the ambient noise in your room right now. Mm-hmm. Do you hear that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, how long has that been going off that way? For quite a while, but I just get used to it, so I don't really hear it anymore. All right. Do you, do you, do you, do you understand that would drive an iguana nuts if it was in a so you want me cage to to in the room? room? No, no, no. That's what killed your trash. No, oh. no. No, now, where, where is your bed in relation to the smoke detector? Um, like two feet from right underneath it. Uh, mm -hmm. And and this has been uh, this has been happening for weeks now, yes, months. Yeah, for like oh, there it is. Yeah, for like a year. <gasps> oh, really? A wow. year? That but is a I, yeah. record of some time. Hold on, let me talk to Drew for a second. Wow, I am impressed. All right, now don't hang up yet. Okay. I do. Five, four, three, two. <laughs> Ooh, good job. One. Thank you. All right. Now, th th this one is of our greatest pastimes. My, it's my greatest love in this show is timing people's low battery, and it then becomes very important to me that I'm able to time the chirp. And, they, and that was 36 seconds. The average runs over 30 and about under 45. So why is this significant, Jack? This is significant because it goes back to Adam Carolla. It goes back to Loveline. It goes back to this meme that. People who are dumb are just not paying attention to their smoke alarms. Got it. So it's an intelligence thing. We will return to Dr. Drew and Loveline shortly, but first let's turn to an interview by the New York Post that was widely shared on social media that shall prove to be relevant. The story is about a 30-year-long federal discrimination lawsuit resulting in $1.8 billion in settlement to 5,200 black and Hispanic teacher candidates because they failed the teacher certification exam at a higher rate, 46%, than white candidates, 10%. Those who failed the test while being black will now receive a back pay of salary from the point they took the test up to the present plus interest and pension for life. The largest payout goes to one 64-year-old Herman Grimm who receives $2.5 million in salary for a job he never did requiring competence he never had. I'll let Jared Taylor introduce the one-minute interview. The federal judge was Kimba Wood, who ruled that requiring teachers to pass violated the Civil Rights Act of 1964 because it had a disparate impact on blacks and Latinos. It had a disparate impact as every legitimate ability test does. Yes. And it wasn't a proper indicator of better performing teachers. As far as this Herman Grimm guy, uh, there has been an interesting interview with him. Listen to a certain uh, repetitive uh, high-pitched squeak in the background. Here we go. Yes, I'm looking forward to this. The lawyer said it was very nice, and they knew I wasn't taking them serious <laughs> because um, I just wasn't taking them serious. You know why? You, would you send me letters and tell me about um, the lawsuit? Because I know a lawsuit either they go through or they won't go through. You know, from uh, reading, hearing news and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I know a couple of people that had, um, well, not in education, but they went through lawsuits and they didn't um, win or anything like that. Mm. So. To me, this like fabric, <laughs> you know, mm. either, you know, but it's uh, when I finally got it in my head, they kept pushing and kept explaining things piece by piece until um, I sort of got it in my head and just listened to them and they went from there. Okay. But still today, I don't really believe it. But, mm. you know, and, and um, 
you say we've from for a long time trying to convince me that it's real it's no game it's no um you know fouls also and all that stuff but it's, it's not i'm a normal person uh i had to struggle for money um even when i closed close to my school it was i think it was october of 2015 but uh there's no way i could have gotten into the board of bed didn't aim to sub because it was too late fact is uh this guy when he speaks i can't understand a word he says and the idea of this guy being a school teacher is just astonishing. But back to Kimba Wood, the federal judge who made that initial ridiculous ruling in 2012. You know anything about Kimba? Well, I'll tell you. In her younger days, she was a Playboy bunny. She was. Yeah, she was up that. and down the bunny trail. Hippity hoppity Kimba's on her way. I hope somebody. Uh, I hope someone splices that into something. That was an amazing uh, rendition. <laughs> well, there. Well, Thank you for that. <laughs> Content creator, I, Hypocrite, has a video on the topic of smoke detector ignorers, which I link below, where he makes the following observation. This issue did come to a head during the lockdown phase of the coronavirus pandemic, in which many students were switched to doing their schooling through online Zoom calls. And the issue of constantly chirping smoke detectors became a large distraction in some schools. For example, they wrote about it in this article at the Washington Post, which detailed how the problem got so bad at Whittier Elementary in Northwest Washington that the principal of the school contacted the fire department to have them help deal with it. Now, one Twitter user posted the demographic makeup of Whittier Elementary, and I'm not sure what the, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I see what they're trying to say here. Others have noticed the same. Here's a highly illuminating thread from Reddit. I've noticed something. If I'm gaming on Xbox Live and an African American joins the chat, there is a guarantee you'll hear the chirp of laziness. It's easier to ignore the low battery warning than to address it. Indeed, the internet is full of memes pertaining to noticing this pattern. I don't know why, but I am offended. First off, that's hella ignorant and stereotypical. And this is what pisses me off about people. How are you gonna stereotype a whole entire race? No, I can't tell you why the hallway chirps, but I can measure it. I can predict the next and following chirp. I have a very good understanding of it, and that's good enough for me. I'm not distracted by the philosophy side of why the hallway chirps. Naturally, any difference between races must be white people's fault, so the galaxy brain explanation is black people cannot afford to buy a 9-volt battery, nor invest the 10 seconds it takes to remove the empty battery. Let's hold that thought, and now turn to what this pizza delivery driver has to share. There is absolutely a racial correlation to this chirping detector thing. I hear them on a regular basis when on deliveries in my highly diverse section of Mobile, Alabama, and I am not exaggerating when I say I cannot recall a single instance where the chirp was at a non-black household. Believe me, I would notice, because I can't help but notice the sound, I have misophonia, and if it was at a white household I would be tickled to finally observe an outlier to the data. There is this one all-black apartment complex that is so bad, if you stand in the center courtyard you hear a symphony of chirps in overlapping layers, so many there's not a 10 second time span without one. What finally prompted me to Google this phenomenon tonight was to see Newark, NJ's black mayor talking on MSNBC about why his city has relatively little police violence against citizens. Here he was talking all about safety, on Zoom from his house, where two smoke detectors kept chirping. So here's an affluent black mayor with not one, but two smoke detectors chirping. Recently, multimillionaire MSNBC television host and political commentator Joy Reid uploaded a rant from her home on how Ron DeSantis is a hypocrite. Let's have a listen. Uh, Mr. This is where woke comes to die, little mini Ron DeSantis. But I digress. So, ironically enough, anti-racist when that damn smoke alarm chirp is even in rich black people's videos. AI is going to affect the music industry. Hey, uh, what you mean? You rapping? Here's another example of a multimillionaire hip hop artist cooking breakfast. Piece of crust. When I tell you these niggas can't beat me at nothing, 
Understand what you're dealing with. I'm from the ghetto. We use a glass, put some flour around it. It's the same thing as a biscuit cutter, nigga. Look at that. Perfect, nigga. Toss them bitches on that pan. Toss them bitches in that oven. Boom. Let's get to the salmon patties. Yeah, I'm real big on all my food being hot and ready at the same time, nigga. There are clearly blacks who marvel at this phenomenon the same way as the rest of us, as demonstrated in the following. Notice how when the black man in glasses White people revere black people in glasses brings up her smoke detector, she can't even parse the question. First of all, you're definitely a single woman because yes. you got the single woman tell. That damn smoke detector. Mm -hmm. How do you live with that? Um, the way that I've been living with just being a single woman is... No, like, no, 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 no. Specifically, the smoke detector that keeps chirping. How oh. do you live with that? Can you just elaborate more on, like, the what, what do you mean by the smoke it, detector? It, it, it keeps going beep. Like red you, flags? You're, you're, are that, you that smoke detector that's beeping in the background. There's a oh. smoke detector. Um, it beeps every 30 seconds and it goes beep. I don't, I don't hear anything beeping. Do, did you just hear it again? Because I don't hear anything. Wait for it. Told you guys that they don't hear it after a while. <laughs> <laughs> there it was. Of people not even being aware of their smoke detector, even when it's called out, Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla notes the following. Now, <clears throat> you would think that if you said to a person, hey, do you have a smoke detector in your room, and they said, no, I don't, that we could move on. We would move on, except for the last 33 times we've done it, it turns out there is a smoke detector. Over their head, chirping at them. And I've had things like, hey, was that a smoke detector? What are you talking about? I thought I heard a smoke detector. I don't know what a smoke detector is. Do you have a smoke detector in your no. room? No, I don't. Chirp? What was <laughs> that? Uh, that that was nothing. Are you sure it wasn't the smoke detector? I no. Chirp? What was that? Oh, uh, that could have been the smoke detector. I've had that conversation right, many times. Many Not times on the air, and that's the problem. That's why now we can't let it go with Monique because I heard the chirp. We know it's there. We I know heard it's the there. Chirp. Yeah. I heard it. I started pacing it. All right, and uh, you're looking up. You see no smoke detector. No, mom was taken out of my room. It was put in a drawer somewhere, maybe? Nope. It, it was taken out of your room for what reason? Well, because the batteries died out, so there was no point in keeping it in my room. Right. Um, no point in changing the batteries. Yeah, it's like, no. it's like when your car battery goes throw dead, you got to throw, 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 throw the car yeah, away. Course. Well, you don't throw it out, but you have someone take it away. Mm -hmm. Put a drawer somewhere. Or something. Yeah, it's no good to anyone anymore. That smoke detector is sitting in the drawer in her room, chirping. And I think it is. I, I'm sure that's You sure it's is. not in your sister's drawer? Changing battery seems to be an enormous Sisyphus task, as also noted from the next example. What was that? Hold on a second. Five, four, three... Two, one, now. Thank go. you. How right, is now that we've we, yeah. <laughs> successfully <laughs> paced the thing, which is I have to do it. And sometimes it takes, sometimes we'll dedicate the entire second hour to trying to pace the uh, uh, smoke detector. But it, I've got it down now. It's about, it's about 36, 37 seconds. Uh, how long has that thing been chirping there, Annabelle? Mm, I don't know. Don't know. Yeah, you would, you would have no way of knowing. Yeah. Two years, maybe. I don't know. Two years. Two years. Two years. I can't get up there to change the battery. So. Right. Ah, no, you no, couldn't do that. No. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I mean, it's like, it's like what are you going to do if the light bulb goes off on the ceiling? you got to move. you got to move. Or yeah. just torch the house and collect the insurance. Yeah. But you can't get up. I mean, if you can't reach it, you can't reach it. What are you going to do? <laughs> All right. Really? Has that thing really been going off for a couple of years? Anna? Yes, yes. Really? Yes. And that... I, I know this is going to sound um, like condescending, but that, that doesn't make you feel bad or stupid or anything that this thing's been going off in your house for two years and you can't figure out how to change a battery on it? I never said I can't figure it out. Oh, okay. Well, touche. <laughs> touche. Okay. Gotcha. Could it be they are not aware of what the chirp means? In this YouTube comment, the video creator replies, that noise wasn't the smoke alarm that was the hallway. It always makes that sound. Also consider the following conversation. Hey, listen, don't you go insane with that thing going off every 10 seconds? I kind of got used to it. I've been living here for like a year, so... Oh, Nicole. Just change the battery. That's all you got to do. Actually, the manager said that it beeps because it doesn't need a battery. 
<laughs> He's trying to chase you out, I think. <laughs> He's gaslighting you, Nicole. He's trying to drive you insane slowly so he can move his in-laws in there. It seems some people are semi-aware but just filter it out. Um, I was just wondering about how I can get into the radio business and journalism and stuff like that because I know you're like the coolest person right now. Yeah, smoke detector. <laughs> All right, we're going to need to focus on that. First, I need to... Uh, I need to pace your smoke detector, so it went off about Yeah, it 13. goes off a lot. I don't even hear it anymore. Yeah. All right. Here's the point. Is this in your room, or is it in the hallway? There is one in my room, but I don't actually know if it's the one. Like, there's one in the hall. There's, like, one everywhere. I, I don't know. Okay. How long has this been going off? Since we've been here. Oh, it's just like okay. Years. Well, you guys, let me go ahead and check your lease agreement. You guys moved in. It says uh, 9-26-03. Uh, Hold on. Let me pull that, uh, pull that paperwork up. Oh, hold on a second. First off, Michelle is stupid enough to be in radio. <laughs> this could just work. I love that answer. How long has it been going on since, since we've, we've been here? Since we've been here. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that. By the way, if, if anyone wants to know why uh, I, I flirt with uh, driving off a freeway overpass every night on the way home, it's those kinds of answers. This is uh, this is why I have such disdain for our callers. But secondly, I, I've said it many times: the smoke detector every thirty seconds, and it's loud over the phone. If you were in the small apartment and that thing was chirping, I would have an epileptic seizure after ten minutes. The point the point is is this would drive a reptile insane. <laughs> Do you understand that if you had, like, a snake in an aquarium, it would eat its own tail and kill itself because of that goddamn smoke detector? And these people who call our show actually go to sleep in the bedroom that it's in. In summary, I find it fascinating how the age of TikTok videos and home office meetings has revealed a whole new reality that was initially discovered in the 90s by Loveline, but then forgotten. I would love to know if there are examples of smoke detector ignorers outside USA, please enlighten me in the comments if you have experience. To dive deeper in this rabbit hole I recommend the links in the video description below. Thanks for your time.